Welcome to part one of the GLIM educational series. In this presentation, we will provide an overview of GLIM. Part two will focus on principles of validating and determining reliability of the GLIM criteria, while part three provides guidance to reviewers of submitted papers describing the use or validation of GLIM. This presentation will provide an overview of GLIM and how the criteria were determined. It will also review in detail each of the five criteria that make up the GLIM diagnostic framework. Finally, this presentation will conclude with key points on how GLIM is positioned within nutrition care. As described by Setterholm, Jensen, and co-authors who outline key nutrition terminology, nutrition disorders, and related conditions are numerous. Malnutrition or undernutrition is the focus of the Global Leadership Initiative on Malnutrition or GLIM. GLIM was initiated in an attempt to develop a global categorization framework for malnutrition based on current definitions. Such a diagnostic framework is needed not only for comparing prevalence across regions and countries as the assessment processes vary, but also to provide guidance for the international classification of diseases. Malnutrition is evidenced by altered body composition that impacts physical and mental functioning as well as immunity and recovery from clinical disease. Malnutrition results from two main pathways. The first is inadequate intake or uptake of nutrients by the body to meet its requirements. The second is inflammation that results in increased requirements as well as impaired utilization of nutrients. This figure provides an overview of how malnutrition can develop. These causes or etiologies provide insight into how malnutrition can be managed. For example, malnutrition without disease due to socioeconomic factors such as living and eating alone may be managed differently from disease-related malnutrition due to an acute injury where inflammation is an important component that needs to be managed or eliminated. In 2016, the GLIN group was developed, representing six continents and over 30 countries. This group agreed to work together to develop a diagnostic framework that could be tailored to individual nations and regional preferences for screening and assessment, but that a common diagnostic language could be used to translate prevalence for worldwide comparison and benchmarking. A core committee was developed, including representatives from four clinical nutrition societies. Several meetings ensued at Aspen and Aspen conferences. The focus of this group's work was toward developing a global consensus on diagnostic criteria to not only support benchmarking, but also amend the malnutrition description in ICD-11. It was noted by this group that malnutrition screening should occur for all hospitalized patients using a valid tool and assessment should be based on current methods used internationally. The criteria to be used globally to categorize a patient as malnourished need to have strong validity and be evidence-based. Criteria were initially selected in a two-step process. The first was identifying and comparing indicators used in common malnutrition screening and assessment tools such as a Subjective Global Assessment, and the Academy of Nutrition and Dietetics Aspen Assessment Criteria. This slide shows that reduced food intake, disease burden and inflammation, weight loss, body mass index, and fat-free mass were the most common indicators used in these tools. The next step was a meeting of the global group at Aspen in 2019, with the express purpose of voting on the inclusion of these criteria to be initially considered as the GLIM diagnostic framework. GLIM was published later that year. It is important to note that GLIM is a provisional approach as it is based on expert opinion and consensus. As noted in the second presentation in this series, GLIM as a framework needs to be validated. This work is currently ongoing. The GLIM approach requires that malnutrition screening and nutrition assessment are completed including an indication of the severity of malnutrition. Diagnoses of malnutrition according to the GLIM criteria should be done alongside screening and assessment. Indicators from risk screening and or assessment tools are used to identify the etiologic and phenotypic criteria used in GLIM. 
There are three phenotypic and two etiologic criteria in the diagnostic framework. At least one etiologic and one phenotypic criteria must be triggered for an individual to be determined as malnourished using the GLIM framework. The phenotypic criteria are used to describe the severity of malnutrition. We will look at each of these criteria individually in the following slides. Weight loss in the past six months is the first phenotypic criteria. Two cut points are used. Greater than 10% weight loss of usual body weight in the past six months indicates severe malnutrition. A low body mass index or BMI is also a phenotypic criteria. Different cut points are recommended based on age and if the patient has Asian ancestry. A healthy body weight for Asian patients occurs when their BMI is greater than or equal to 18.5. For other older adults who are prone to sarcopenia and loss of bone mass, a slightly higher cut point is used to determine the risk of low BMI. Reduced muscle mass is the final phenotypic criteria. This can be measured in a variety of ways, including physical exam, calf or arm circumference, BIA, CT, ultrasound or MRI, and DEXA. A variety of cut points from the literature have been suggested when using these criteria to determine reduced muscle mass. The first etiologic criteria is that of reduced food intake. A variety of methods are used to determine intake, including self-report. Nutrients can fail to be consumed or be used by the body. A variety of risk factors for lack of consumption or malabsorption are used to determine if food intake is inadequate for the body's need. For example, short bowel syndrome would affect nutrient use by the body. Clinical judgment is needed for this criteria to determine if the symptom or clinical condition is sufficiently severe to impair food intake or assimilation. Inflammation or disease burden is the second etiologic criteria. It is preferred that a laboratory test be used to demonstrate that inflammation is occurring in the body, such as a high C-reactive protein level or low albumin or prealbumin levels. Alternatively, occurrence of a chronic disease such as chronic organ failure, chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, or active cancer can be considered an indicator of mild to moderate body inflammation. Severe inflammation is noted with acute injury, trauma, or the occurrence of a major infection. In all of these diseases or injury-related conditions, inflammation is common and can lead to malnutrition if unmanaged. These are just examples. The GLIM Working Group is working on a list of types of illnesses that may represent acute and chronic diseases, as well as on suggestions for cutoff points for albumin, prealbumin, and CRP. So, putting together the phenotypic and etiologic criteria, GLIM can be used to categorize a patient as malnourished. It is important to note that in practice, all five of these indicators should be assessed, but the occurrence of only two, one phenotype and one etiology, is needed for categorizing a patient as malnourished. The framework has been provided here in the form of a checklist to indicate how GLIM should be used. As noted, phenotypic criteria are used to determine the severity of the malnutrition. The second row in this table shows the cut points that can be used for weight loss, low BMI, and reduced muscle mass. How is GLIM positioned within nutrition care? GLIM is used alongside of the use of valid and reliable screening and assessment tools. It is not a replacement for either of these steps. GLIM is not considered an assessment. It is not sufficiently comprehensive to replace a standardized assessment tool or a comprehensive nutrition assessment. GLIM does allow for a global categorization method for malnutrition, allowing users worldwide to be able to make comparisons on prevalence. It is important to note that GLIM is not a new definition of malnutrition, but rather a framework based on globally accepted definitions of malnutrition. GLIM is not designed to monitor malnutrition and does not replace valid and reliable screening and assessment tools or methods for monitoring. 
However, it still is important to monitor if GLIM status is changing by treatment or disease category. GLIM is a flexible approach for use in diverse hospital settings where resources may vary. However, the framework continues to undergo validation and there may be adjustments to the framework with developing knowledge. In sum, GLIM is a consensus-based framework for categorizing a patient as malnourished. GLIM is to be used alongside current valid screening and assessment tools and methods that guide treatment decisions. GLIM is based on the leading screening and assessment tools currently used. Three phenotypic and two etiologic criteria are used to determine if a patient should be categorized as malnourished. Research based on retrospective and prospective data is needed to validate GLIM. Thank you for your interest in GLIM.